Yo guys, what's going on? Welcome back to a new video. And today for you guys, we're gonna be reacting to The Odd Ones Out again. And today he came out with a video called Making a Show. And I reacted to his last video, so I'm gonna react to this one. Before the video starts, make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe. And yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Let's get right into it. You might be thinking that me giving you advice on <laughs> pitching a show is insincere or not applicable because of that. But listen, there was <laughs> still a whole lot of work that went into my pitch for a TV show, and even with all my subscribers, mm -hmm. statistically, I still got turned down way more times than I got oh, picked wow. up. If Netflix is just green lighting everyone with a big sub count, then why doesn't <laughs> I did a thing have a show, huh? Why yeah. doesn't Mr. Beast have a Netflix show? Oh, actually, yeah. he's he's doing just fine. <laughs> By the way, if you are someone with a lot of subscribers, don't just walk into a studio and say, hey, I have a lot of subs, <laughs> give me a show, okay? Uh Walk in and say, hey, I have a lot of subs and free merchandise for you, okay? <laughs> Diversification is key. <laughs> Networks like Netflix, Cartoon Network, and That's Nickelodeon, an they're That's in the biz kick. of making content for their platform and in turn getting you, the viewer, to watch said content on said platform, yeah. thus generating a perpetual money-making cycle that everyone, including you, benefits <laughs> from. Yeah. Now, the executives in charge don't have all the time to come up with every single show they're going to make. So, they turn to the general public, open their doors, and will listen to anyone pitch them their idea for a television series. But even if you have an Emmy-winning idea, if you're not able Spongy to guy. properly sell your idea and win over the hearts of the network executives, it's not going to get picked up and developed. Then mm -hmm. your only option is to independently fund and develop your idea yourself. But what kind of a loser would do that? <laughs> <laughs> Stick around to the end of the video to hear more about my current Kickstarter, or click the link okay. in the description. Alright, catch you later. And thus, the art of pitching a show is born. Okay. You could honestly teach a whole class about this. Now, obviously, you can't just walk into a studio empty-handed. All right. No. Big idea. What if we do a show where there's a talking alligator, right? And he's <laughs> like, yo, what? I'm a crocodile. You got to come prepared, but also not be over-prepared. Yeah. I was actually surprised to learn this, but going into the pitch room with finished scripts, turnarounds of your characters, and plushies will actually hurt your chances of getting picked up. The reason yeah. for this is okay. because executives will sometimes like to change parts of your show, and if you already have all the characters and story mapped out, they'll not mm -hmm. want to pick you up because they feel like they can't change anything. <laughs> You're not even supposed to write any scripts until after you get the green light, because the executives have to approve all the scripts you make and the writers that you want to hire. So yeah. if you ever pitch a show, just be open for changes. Which, I can attest, is a very different experience to what it's like on YouTube. What you do want to bring to the pitch is this super important document called a show Bible. Okay. And then you need to convert to that show's religion. The Ayo. show Bible <laughs> is a document that contains everything your audience needs to know about your show. In the beginning of a show Bible, there should be a one to two <laughs> sentence description that covers the main synopsis of your show. It's kind of like yeah. an elevator pitch, but here in the biz, we call it a log line. I'll give you mine <laughs> as an example. When James's parents moved them to a tiny desert town where eccentric scientific minds have been brought together to do unfretted experiments, James finds himself surrounded by the children of these scientists and the offspring of their experiments. The result? Unlike in his last town, James is no longer the oddest kid around. Okay. I don't know if the show's been out by the time this video comes out, but we kind of lost the new in town theme. Like I said, the executives want to make changes. Mm -hmm. After the logline, you write a page-long backstory where you go more in-depth with your idea. Answer questions like, who are the characters? What are their goals? Where do they live? Just general stuff, because after yeah. the backstory page, you're going to write all about your characters. This is the part of the Bible where you can just go balls to the wall with details and description. Who, how, and why are your characters? What are their wants, needs, fears, flaws, likes, dislikes, and general personality traits? <laughs> These are important traits to think about even if a specific detail isn't going to be reflected in the show. Like in my Bible for the crocodile, Max, some of the things we said he liked were the rain, raw chicken, and laying <laughs> on warm rocks in the sun. Now, nice. I don't think you got to enjoy a single one of those things in the show, but these are the types of questions you have to answer to get the clearest idea of who really your characters arguing. are. You should also include drawings of your characters. This can help show their personality and body language, but just keep them to doodles, because, again, be they can be 
they're subjected to change. Next, yeah. there needs to be drawings and descriptions of specific locations that the characters spend a lot of time in. This will help show the overall world and tone of the show. And lastly, I know it's long, that's why it's called a show bible and not a show pamphlet. You need yeah. to write out page long episode ideas, not mm -hmm. scripts. This will show the executives what a typical episode would look like and the direction and tone you want to go with the show. Honestly, there's so much that goes into a show bible. I'm really only scratching the surface. If you are genuinely interested in pitching oh. a show, or even a little <laughs> interested in cartoons, then I would highly recommend looking at other show bibles online for inspiration and how they should be formatted. It's mm -hmm. pretty fun looking through older show bibles and seeing the earliest versions of your favorite Ayo. cartoons. This is what Mermaid Man and Barnacle Bill were going to look like. Barnacle I mean, look, look, Bill. Look, isn't that cool? Unfortunately, you can't just hand an executive your show bible and silently wait for them to finish reading it. You also have to energetically and flawlessly pitch your show. Executives listen to like nine pitches a day. So if you're not selling your show with 110% enthusiasm, they're going to pass right over you. Mm -hmm. So you have to practice your pitch like your paycheck depends on it. Me yeah. and the showrunner I worked with, Ethan Banville, practiced our pitch so many times. We <laughs> practiced in front of a mirror to our family members. We filmed ourselves practicing and then watched the footage, gave each other notes, and then burned the evidence. We memorized uh -huh. our whole Bible, but despite everything, the first time we pitched, I was still nervous. I had no idea what pitching a show <laughs> would be like. Studio. We brought in our stapled Bible that we typed out on Microsoft Word, and I thought, mm -hmm. This isn't enough. This Bible doesn't even have a spine. I still thought we needed to bring in finished scripts and character designs to show the executives how much thought we put into the show. But Ethan reassured me, no, no, the executives don't want to be overwhelmed with content. But when we got to the lobby, I saw the group ahead of us pitching their show, and they had cardboard cutouts of their characters, oh. and they were handing the executives custom plushies, oh. and I turned to Ethan, we are so underprepared. When we got inside, we pitched the show just like we practiced a thousand <laughs> times, and then the executive told me that no studio would ever want to work with a YouTuber. Dang. Yeah, sometimes they don't even wait to tell you in an email that they're going to pass. Sometimes they just get it over with right then and there. Hey, so, you. you know, not the best confidence Aww. boost for your first pitch, but we kept on pitching, and we kept <laughs> hearing a lot of no's, and if you ever pitch, get ready to hear that response. Everyone in Hollywood has a story of being turned down by everyone and then finding the right home for their idea. And sometimes really talented people work for years on an idea and yeah, it goes true. nowhere. So the fact that I was even able to make something and it didn't get canceled, I'm incredibly mm -hmm. grateful for. But getting a show green lit is not the only way to get it made. You can always put in the work and develop something yourself. Sock friends. No, you won't have a network backing you with tons of money, but <laughs> if you truly believe in your idea, you should at least put something out for the world to see and over time build your own audience and then, who yeah, knows, the maybe even sell it to a network. But not the one who said they never work with a YouTuber. They're, they're horrible. Uh <laughs> uh, okay, that's all the time I got. I gotta get back to watching Oddballs streaming October 7th on my Netflix. <laughs> Ad time. Hello, this is James, and I'm here to show you my most exciting project yet, these okay. AR puzzles. After Ooh. my last two Kickstarter campaigns, we wanted to switch things up and give you an immersive experience. I we took puzzles, everything honestly. you They're love cool. about a normal jigsaw puzzle and elevated the experience by making brand new, never before seen artwork, and we printed it on these custom cut pieces. I mean, like, this is in the puzzle. This is a piece in the puzzle. <laughs> My new app teleports you into the puzzle world with a series oh, of custom-made really cool, animations. Just download the app on your phone, scan the QR code, and okay. watch the puzzle come to life. Does your grandma's really puzzle cool, do actually. that? No, no, but this no. could be your grandma's new puzzle. When was the last time you called her? And if puzzle building wasn't hard enough, you can now do it right beside me with my new AR coaster. Someone put it in my hand, please. Uh -huh. We created three different puzzles, each with their own unique set of animations and levels of difficulty. The puzzles <laughs> come in 225, 300, and 450 total pieces, so you have a variety of options for how long you want to build with me each day. So please head on over to Kickstarter and back my AR puzzle project today. Okay. Add over.
All right, guys, so that is the end of the video. This was actually really cool. Um, if you guys didn't know, I go to Towson University for film, so all this stuff is actually familiar to me. Like, I learned all this stuff back when I was a freshman, like four years ago or whatever. But like, you know, log lines, treatments, script writing, script writing, like research, stuff like that. And seeing actually like the, that being put in place through a YouTuber's perspective is actually really interesting. Cause I've had to do all that stuff before and it is definitely like a lot of work. You get rejected a lot and everything, but you know, you just keep at it and it's really cool. But I'm glad he got his show through. I'm definitely gonna watch it again. If you guys want to see me like, stream that live with you guys and watch along or do something like that, just let me know. It'd definitely be a cool idea. But yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for all the support you guys show. Thank you guys again for 600 subscribers. Let's keep it going. And yeah, see you guys in the next one. See ya.